Hey, morning everyone. So, just had a bit of a hectic start to the day. Um, if anyone has got children, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but that was uh, fun and games. Enough about that. Today, got a lot on and we need to crack on. We've got a podcast session with Sem. Uh, details I'll be sharing with you shortly. Uh, he's a planner based in London. And um, yeah, just we connected on social media. So that's gonna be quite fun, sort of learning about his journey. Got a few more meetings, got to catch up with um, the website for the Bar Financial, the new changes, got to make sure we keep pushing ahead. Deadline is really, really tight, so we can't let a day slip without getting progress. Equally with the tech startup, we set ourselves, again, for those who have been watching the other videos, we set ourselves lots of mini goals, and lots of mini deadlines, rather than one major one, because there's lots of little hurdles we need to get over. So the deadline was by this Friday to have be clear on the parameters we're looking for within uh, the data we're going to be sucking in into our database we're going to be making sure we're going to be using a talent which is a tool to suck in the data into our aws um, database and that's all going to be done by friday tight time frames and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done so um could be pushing the guys on that front and yeah, lots of other little bits today. Um, more business planning for the for Bar Financial um, in terms of growth plans, growth strategies, which is um, which is it's like all these things. You know, you want it done quickly, but you need to really, really think carefully about the strategy because you'd be looking to invest your time and energy into it. So it's a case of really sort of trying to map it out and think about that closely, analysing it. Other than that, a lot of probably um, admin stuff. What else are we doing? Um, the usual sort of duties that we're going to do. And I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, but I'm sure there'll be lots more, so I'll share it with you guys. Catch you later. Hey guys, just preparing for the podcast session with Sam Setting. He's a planner based in London, and we can be using the Anchor app. So this is not a face-to-face -face podcast session, where most of the podcast sessions have been. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a test, a bit of a trial using the Anchor app with people who are further afield. It's quite exciting, it means we can potentially have podcast sessions with people who are in London, Nottingham, Manchester, you know, wherever, um, in America, Australia, and, you know, we can still capture that engagement and conversation, but as you know, you know, there's, there's something a bit more magical, I think, you actually get to meet somebody face to face and see them in their eyes, so we'll see how it goes, hope it goes well, definitely check out the Anchor app if, for those who haven't seen it or used it. Even if it's not because you want to produce podcasts, but maybe you just want to be able to listen to them. There's a lot of, um, you know, interesting stuff coming out of that. Um, a lot of, you know, obviously people, creative people who are looking to produce different types of content, all sorts of subjects, not just business. So yeah, check it out. Worth looking into. An organisation, if you will, that specialises in a uh, higher base, um, ranging from homeowners, landlords, property investors. It's fascinating. I love, in all honesty, I love hearing people's stories because I think for me, Everyone's got a really unique story and everyone's come comes from it at a different angle and I think everyone's journey is is so unique and I think being able to share that is is very honourable and, and and giving because there's a lot of people who who may be looking to start out in business or look thinking what they're gonna do or maybe they're in business already but they're interested to see how somebody in their own sector is doing things or indeed how somebody in a different sector is doing things maybe they could learn something from different sectors um, it's certainly something that I I look at I look at other businesses other industries other sectors to see how they're going about doing it how they're marketing themselves and I think we can all learn from from each other and I think that's really good actually just to, just to say you know the fact that you're you're not wanting to get distracted too much in different opportunities or different ways of doing the same job that you're doing it's you're very clearly focused and, and have a clear eye on where you're going and what you want to try and achieve. And I think that's really, really commendable and very important because I think it's very easy to get <coughs> pulled in different directions with different opportunities. And I think having a clear structure, a clear path makes you very efficient, focused and amazing at what you do. And I think that moment when you decide to try something different, you've got to make sure that that factory production line doesn't get watered down, doesn't get affected, and by you know maybe you playing with other options and ideas, it's not put, put away from the core. And I think that's always the balancing act with any business that's wanting to grow into different sectors or grow into different markets, and it's very challenging. Or even starting a new business venture, you know, I think it can really distract you from your core. Okay, awesome. And do do you find clients? 
um, often build out their projects or are they looking to get planned permission and flipping the land? I think that's a very, very smart strategy. It's... That's interesting. That's interesting because there is huge profits in just getting their planning and just they're walking away, isn't there? The, the, the uplift of the land. Is there any impact on the market, the housing market, in terms of the sector and industry that you're in? So, and, and that was, the, you know, the banks were going bust and the banks were sort of lending. But yet every single month, every single year, we grew and we grew and we grew. For a lot of small businesses, I think you can get caught up in the, the macro news um, rather than focus on the micro. Yeah, you know what, I 100% feel you on that, 100%, because I think a lot of um, people in, in, in industries think they're in competition with each other, and actually the reality is there's pl plenty of everybody. And I think actually if we collaborate more and work closer together, we'll be stronger together. And I think um, there's often that um, uh, element of wrongfully, you know, trying to get one up on, on your local competition. I think that's a really poor, weak angle to go on. And I've got, it's those types of people, I'm just going to go on a little rant here, <laughs> so you have to forgive me. But those people who bad mouth other people in their own industry, I never trust further than I can throw them. And whenever somebody says, oh, da, 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 that's somebody else in their industry, I just think I've got... You've just lost all credibility for me, because the moment you say that, I'm questioning your questioning you fully. So, yeah, and and business, whatever industry you're in, is is a, it's, it's a bit like a sport, really. You know, you, you, you're 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 fighting, and you're either on my team or you're or the or the opposing team. You know, and if you're in the opposing team, I'm going to try and smash you. So <laughs> it's as simple as that. And they'll try and smash me, and that's fine. That's the way it goes. But there's got to be respect. I think there's got to be a professional respect. I think that's the key. Right. So it's like, it has to be. There has to be sportsmanship, right? So. Um, yes. Not dirty tactics. Yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. At the end of the day, the market's going to decide. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um. Just, just then. Um. Talking about your different projects. Um. What's the most exciting? I don't know if you can tell us, but if you can, that'd be great. Um. The most. I don't know. Exciting for whatever reason, and you can tell us why it might be exciting because it was your uncle but you know it could be something exotic is there a particular project so far that you've worked on which was just got you really super excited are you involved with any sort of um land acquisition do you go sourcing land for, for clients or do you or do the clients come to you once they've got the land awesome so just um finally what's the what's your plans what's the big big plans for um for yourself and, and your business moving forward so listen, Sam. Thank you ever so much for uh, yeah, coming on, on board with, this, with the podcast session. Absolutely fascinating. Um, love to hear your story. So I'm super excited to see where it goes. And next time, I, I come up to London every now and again. So next time I'm up there, we'll have to uh, hook up and yeah, catch up. Hey guys, just had an awesome podcast session with Sam Setting. He's a planner up in London. He's been in the game for 15 months on his own business. He's got obviously experience before that. And it's just a really fascinating story to hear how he started so young, pretty much straight out of uni. And he's just, by the sounds of it, smashing it. So I'm super, super excited for him. And really, really interesting to hear his story. So I hope you enjoy it. Check out the podcast when it comes out. I'm going to be going up to London sometime soon. So I'll definitely um, give him a shout. We'll, we'll catch up. So I think that's really nice, actually. You meet people in the sort of social media world and, and, and connect and network, and it's amazing for that. But I think fundamentally, it's also, if you can, find the time to meet these people face-to-face. -face. That's what it's all about. So, guys, listen, keep tuned in, and I'll catch you later. Okay. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's good. All right? Yeah. How you doing? How you, How you doing, doing, man? I'm Ben. Hi, Ben. Nice I'm Wayne. I, I got a shoot, unfortunately. That's all right, mate. No problem. Take it easy. All right, Ben. Okay, got to shoot back um, to basically we've got to get a cleaner in and um, we've got a holiday let we need to um, get turned around so it's all a bit hectic this morning um, our little boy's also having his first night um, away on a residential he's only eight so he's only going away for one night but he's um, quite excited about that but also very nervous if I'm honest so we're all a bit hectic trying to organize uh, little holiday let that we put out and um, we just got a cleaner helping us out we haven't used the cleaner yet so uh, yeah just gonna go and meet her and let her in and show her the ropes just running around chase my tail a bit today
Right, yeah, so just as I just said, rushing back to meet the cleaner who we're using for a holiday let. Um, for, you, for those of you who don't, don't do holiday lets or you think about doing holiday lets and you're just sort of weighing up, I mean, maybe you're looking to transition from buy to lets because of the tax changes to holiday lets because they're more favourable. One thing I would say is it's fucking hard work. Do not go into it thinking it's easy. It's not. There's a lot more hands-on requirements. There's a lot higher expectations, a lot higher standards you need to have, everything. At the end of the day, people, from a practical perspective, every single changeover, you got to, you got to turn it around. You've got to clean it. You've got to do all that unless you have source it, which we're going to start looking at. But the reality is, it's, you know, you can't even outsourcing. You can't just assume it's going to be a good job. You've got to keep an eye on the quality of it and maybe making sure they're doing a good job. So even not doing it yourself requires oversight. Whereas a standard buy to let, you just rent it and the tenants live in it. It's down to them to clean, wash, do all their own shit, but you just collect the rent. So it's really, really a very different ball game. Don't go into it with your eyes not wide open. So that's what I'm doing, rushing back. We haven't used the cleaner before. And the reason is we've only, this is a, this is a new venture for us. It, We've got like we're fortunate to have like um, an annex to our house, and it's a, it was a space we never really utilised or used because we had young children, and basically we couldn't hear them if we were there. So maybe that was a bad move. Maybe we should have kept it. We could have hidden away from them. But you know, in all seriousness, it was just a space we didn't use, and it, it was lovely. And I think we will use it in the future, to be honest with you, when they get bigger, and we might stop holiday letting. But for now. Well, why not? You know, I'm a businessman. I'm thinking about opportunities all the time. I've got my little, I call it my invisible radar up, scanning for opportunities, looking at what's happening, looking at what people are doing, why they're doing things. So it just, it was just, it just made sense. Anyway, won't bore you too much on that. So I've, we've got to meet the cleaner. It's going to help hugely because I think if she's good, she, we can use her throughout you know, onwards and throughout, you know, the busiest seasons. And it's gonna take a lot of pressure off, importantly, for my wife, who is also self-employed, also tries to run a house, also tries to look after the kids. And, you know, it, it, as you can imagine, it's it's pretty hectic. So, you know, that's what we sign up for. That's fine, you know, there's no, we're not complaining, we love it. But I think if I can, if it can take pressure off her, it just takes pressure off all of us. Um, and that's a good thing because so far she's she's insisted on cleaning it herself, which which is amazing, and I've helped out as well. Um, but and, and the reason for that is she's a mega perfectionist, which is brilliant. But it's got to be absolutely perfect, and she has the highest standards you can possibly imagine. So she definitely uh, keeps me in in line. So. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting seeing if, you know, how it goes in terms of uh, her, her letting the reins go a little bit, but I think it's important that we do it just a little bit for our sanity as much as anything. So getting a little bit of help. Outsourcing sometimes is really, really helpful. And actually, you know what, on that note, I think outsourcing a lot of things in any industry, in any business, in anything you're doing is, 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 a, is a massive win because fundamentally, in theory, the person you outsource to should be the professional, should be the expert in what they do. They, should, you know, if that's what they do, they should be better at it than what you are. And and that could go as far as you know, clients outsourcing their search for, you know, the right mortgage by using mortgage brokers. It could be somebody outsourcing the accounts because they're not accountants and they need to make sure that they make on top of their accounts to an accountant rather than doing their own tax returns. It could be outsourcing. Uh, a painter and decorator to paint you know your house or your room because actually they'll do a better job than, than you will 
of course, you know, the question is, do you want to stay at home and spend those hours doing it yourself? Some people do, and some people love that, and some people want to do their own research and figure it out themselves. Fine. But for a lot of people, either they're not going to do it as well, well they, well, they won't do it, even if they think they can do it as well. They won't do it as well. And it's a better use of your time and energy and your resource to spend that time doing something that's going to make you more money, or is it better to spend your time painting a wall? I know for me, certainly, it makes more sense for me to outsource things like that because I'll make more money and actually utilizing my time and energy on the things that I'm good at. So that's the way I sort of live my life. And I think there's a lesson there for a lot of people. So we'll see. Lesson, resources, use the resources at your disposal, outsource when necessary. We're gonna see what this clean is like. Fingers crossed she's on the money. So we'll catch you later. Okay, just had the uh, cleaner arrived so that's good just met her she seems really nice so um fingers crossed it works out so yeah positive so this is for 25,000 no for between 10,000 and 25,000 square foot I didn't have a industrial space to let oh, the, the, the 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 just for that small and you turned around bit. <laughs> so, just run that by me again so, we've, we've focusing on, basically, I've had to split it's it down to make the rules. Things. Yeah. So, obviously, it, it, because it's... Okay, first time in a long time. I've actually been able to, I think, leave the office when it's still light. Um, a little bit, you might be able to look back at my videos and say, actually, Ben, you left early on another day and it's still light, so uh, I might be talking rubbish, but I can't actually remember the last time. And obviously it's getting lighter, which is amazing, I'm loving it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, um, busy day as usual, good fun, quite intense. Um, again, playing with the website, trying to push that ahead. Getting a little bit behind on the tech side. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember our setting many deadlines, one of which is, the, uh, is tomorrow for the data all being there. I'm being sucked in, ready. Hey guys, by the way, it's not bad, is it? Not a bad view, not a bad place to live, not a bad place to work. Um, yeah, just look at that. I don't know if I can still, yeah, you can get the idea. But, yeah, very much, it's proving very complex in terms of producing the parameters that we want. And it's looking, Basically, the, the difficulty is we're looking at commercial property and different property types. So we've got industrial, we've got retail, we've got office. They all have different parameters that they work with. So an industrial will have, you know, eaves. They've got to be a certain height that they, that they can't be. The, roof, the, the ceiling has to be a certain height before the eaves can be X, Y, and Z. And, Obviously, that's not applicable to retail. So all the different parameters are very unique and, sp and specialist within each different sector segment within that whole world. So we're trying to create these rules for for all these commercial, but within each you know, industrial, a retail, and uh, an office. And it's just basically very challenging and a lot of work because we're creating these rules to be able to then produce test data that actually when we go into demo looks realistic because there's absolutely no point demoing something when it's absolutely you know the data just doesn't make any sense so it doesn't have any credibility so although it's test data we do want to have credibility so that's proving challenging in terms of how complex it is to produce those test rules so we can then produce the test data, but we're getting there. So that's a little bit on that. Um, what else? Yeah, today I've got to get back home a little bit early. Is um, my older boy, who's eight years old. You might have seen him in yesterday's video. He's uh, on his first residential for one night. So he's anxious and a little bit scared and excited, as you can imagine. But for our younger one, our six-year-old, 
obviously he can't go on it, which might make him a little bit disappointed. So I'm gonna try and sort of spoil him tonight and make him feel special. So that's why I'm having him a bit early. So I'll catch you later. Okay, um, just got into the car. I forgot to mention when I was walking back, all that beautiful view was, I was talking about the other day about, you know, I had a business chat and looking at a uh, possible new opportunity and, and I was just talking about the, having to make that decision, whether it's worth pursuing or, or not pursuing, even though it might be a good opportunity. It's got to be, you know, I've got to have the time, I've got to have the, it's got to be the right structure, all, all that stuff, because I think it's really important. And again, I've talked about it with Sam Setton, who I did a podcast with today. <coughs> Lovely guy, by the way, super nice guy. Got to check him out. Um, he's a planner, and uh, yeah, super nice guy. I'm very excited for him. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into that just now because I've talked about that already on the podcast, and there's a bit of blurb that you'll probably see on the video on the daily. But we were talking about on the podcast, and I was talking about on the, my daily the other day of it's very exciting to get stuck in and involved with lots of different projects, lots of different business opportunities. But the reality is it can spread you too thin and it can actually make you um, not focus on your core and your goal and your focus. And on that subject, not related to that business meeting I had, but on that subject I was invited to, there goes the phone again. You still on? Yeah, you still on. So I was, <laughs> just as usual, sling it up there and do what we can do. Um, I was invited to stand as a local councillor which is a huge honour and um, I just I thought about it for a little while for a few days because you know obviously you know it's, it's nice to you know do some good for your local community and and what have you but in all honesty I, I thought about it long and hard and although I, I want to be able to help my community as much as I can I genuinely do not have the time and I, as much as that might be a great opportunity, as much as it might be great to do, and it's something I would love to do, right now in my life I can't, and I've had to say no. So talking about, just talking about turning opportunities and things down, I've just turned one down, which was that disappointing to turn it down. But I genuinely am so flat out with everything, and I wouldn't be able to do a good job, and I wouldn't want to let people down. So that's a little bit of an example of what I've been talking about is not spreading yourself too thin, focusing on your core and doing, doing the right thing. Because fundamentally that will get you to where you need to get to. Okay, end of the day now, on top of everything which is really pleasing, got all the dailies out, did a lot of work on lots of different things today, did a lot of work in terms of the planning for the growth strategy for Bar Financial which was exciting. Taking There's a lot of research I'm doing at the moment and, and it's taking longer than I want but I really want to make sure I get it right. So it, that's a little bit frustrating but it's really interesting del delving into other industries and other sectors and seeing how they go about doing what they do. So I just want to leave you with this thought, the power of people. So that's what I'm looking at. So <laughs> that little mystery there. So yeah, I finished, got on top of everything, hanging out with a few buddies tonight, so I'm heading out now. So yeah, can't wait to catch up with you tomorrow. If you like, obviously today, hopefully you do, um, I'd love it if you can join me on another day and maybe press the subscribe button, which I'm gonna put up there. And you can also see all the playlists, which I'm gonna chuck up there. And can't wait to catch up with you guys soon. Take care for now.